Hey everyone, it's Swank Ivy again with another Letters to an Asexual. This is number 71. And I've got to quick make this video before we get into the weekend because I'm going to run out of time this month if I don't do it now. I'm having a really big, awesome party for the Steven Universe movie that's coming out on September 2nd. I'm going to have a bunch of people over and we're going to watch the movie, eat a lot of nerdy food. Hopefully I'll be able to take some video, if not at least pictures. I'll see if there's anything I can share about that on my channel. But I know this is not really why most people have subscribed to me here. so. Uh, you know, I try not to go uh, too hog wild with that. Anyway, the subject of today's video is something that I've touched on in a previous video, but I want to take a different angle on it. I'm going to talk about fearing sex, and I'm actually going to acknowledge some aspects of that that are true for some asexual people. Uh, when we talk about fear of sex in the asexual community, we mostly talk about how we're not afraid of sex, or that at least that's not definitive of our orientation or at the root of it, and that is true in most cases, although of course there are, is some subsection of our community that has some trauma or has some abuse and also considers them as themselves asexual regardless of whether that interacts with their orientation, they have a right to that identity. Um, but it is problematic to say that asexuality cannot exist unless it is a trauma reaction or a fear reaction. Um, I want to talk about that in the larger context of what sex means to a society. And before I go explaining everything, before I even get into the letter, I might as well just read the letter because it'll explain a lot of stuff. So first, uh, the letter that I'm going to read was not sent to me. It was sent to a different person's advice blog. And it's funny that this is the case because the last time I talked about fear of sex, that was the case. But this is a different letter. It was an anonymous person who wrote to an asexual blogger who mostly answers questions and gives advice. And the anonymous person said, I sort of have an issue. I've identified as asexual for a little over two years now, although I used to think something was actually wrong with me, where I was repulsed by the idea of sex, which kept me out of basically any relationship in school. I tried to come out to my family as asexual, and even after explaining it, they either disregarded it, or, like my sister, she flat out tells me I'm not, and basically said I need to have sex in order to know. I don't know what to do, and I'm sad over it. And... I might as well not go over what the other person said in response to it, but I would like to react to that with one of my posts. And here's what I want to say about being afraid of sex and being possibly repulsed by sex. Um, here's what I'm going to say. Asexual is what we say we are when we don't feel that way about other people. It is not a statement about whether we like sex anyway, necessarily. So, who are we? So, people who say we have to push ourselves to endure a sexual experience before we're allowed to identify as asexual are mistaken. Not to mention that those of us who do entertain this notion and still come out of it thinking we're asexual tend to be told we didn't do it right or we did it with the wrong gender, or we did the wrong position, or just ruined everything with our preconceived notions. I don't know why they think we should have this ingrained, intrinsic desire to make ourselves hate sex, since everyone tells us how great we're supposed to think it is, but they should really learn to listen to what we're saying about ourselves and respect it, instead of scrambling to invalidate us. And if they're right that, hey, one day you do find someone who you want to have sex with, Will they have done anything good for you by taunting you with, well, I told you so. Their position is not for you, it's for them. They should get busy learning how to offer basic respect to other people or else admit that it's their investment in our sexual orientation that is inspiring their reaction. Not better knowledge of us than we have about ourselves and not out of desire for us to be happy. We've told them what would make us happier, respecting us and listening to us. Their insistence on explaining our orientation away is about their own bullheadedness and closed-minded agenda, not actually about us. And leading more into reacting to the fear of sex, here's a pretty long and personal post that I followed up with sometime later after thinking about this. As an asexual person who does not desire sex and actively does not want to have sex, 
and plans to never have sex. I am, of course, frequently asked the question, well, are you afraid of sex? It's kind of a good question, I guess, but at the same time, the following is generally expressed or implied. Because if you're afraid of sex, that means you have a problem. And that's where I disagree. Here's the thing. I think I'd be pretty neutral about sex if the world wasn't the way it is. It probably would have been something I'd have been more curious about, more willing to try openly, less weirded out about, and just more generally indifferent to. But the world is the way it is. I live in a world that dumps some crushing value judgments on me about whether, why, and with whom I have sex, about what it means if I do and if I don't, about what it says to others, about myself, about what I clearly must feel towards someone else if I consent to it or withhold it, about what kind of person I must be depending on what sex I have or don't have. I live in a world that aggressively pushes its values about sex onto me, and sometimes those values are contradictory. For instance, I'm supposed to save it for the one I love if I'm a good girl. But being a good girl means I'm obsessed with purity, and I need to get over myself and also must be suffering and denying myself pleasure, etc. As an able-bodied, non-religious, cis, white woman in the West, I have a different set of expectations about sex than people of different genders, ability palettes, races, orientations, religious upbringings, and national origins. And no one at any intersection is free of expectations about how they should have sex. I know how mine have affected me. And I know that fearing sex isn't just about fearing the sex act. I am not attracted to anyone sexually. I actively do not want to do sex with any partners, and the fact that this upsets so many people as they insist I need to change myself to view sex as beautiful and necessary is incredibly disturbing. That attitude right there does a lot to turn sex into a thing I might have otherwise been sort of meh about into a thing I think I would fear or hate. Because I'm being told that my lack of attraction and desire is unacceptable, and that it is very, very important that I either reject or silence myself to experience it or just endure it for other people's sake and shut up about it. I will never know how I would look at sex if this world really did give me a take it or leave it choice about it. Not engaging is considered an act of aggression toward men who want me or an act of self-hate and self-denial or a political statement or a sign of unthinkable selfishness. You know, because one of my functions is supposed to be to be accommodating to those who desire my body. I think I am afraid, because there is no decoupling sex from what has always surrounded it for me. I do a pretty damn good job analyzing it and separating those things from my actual experience, and in those instances where I can focus on it, I just get meh. Meh, no, I would not want that person to lie on top of me and thrust. No, I would not want to trust that person with my body in that situation. No, I don't want my clothes off around that person and I don't want their hands on me. No, I don't want them in my bed. No, I don't want them to look at me like that. Meh, meh, meh. It's a shrug, a disinterest, a lack of attraction, a non-issue. But there's no denying that all the baggage surrounded what I am expected to value about sex turns into a firestorm of hatred and harassment when I don't. And I'm expected to calmly accept that my fear of that package describes a personal failure of mine. If I'm afraid of the ugly picture people have painted of sex through their demand that I enjoy it in a prescribed way on other people's terms, then that's ammunition to assign me a disorder that I should want to cure. Notice I said ammunition because they're wielding it like a weapon. This shriek of, you need help! Not because they want me to be helped, but because they want me to accept that how I am is synonymous with being wounded. You can't stand there with a weapon, shooting me with it and then threatening me with it again, and then ask me to accept that I have a pathological fear of bullets caused by something internally wrong with me. I'm afraid of the bullets. I'm afraid of the guns. I'm afraid of the people who scream while wielding them, and I don't think I'm to blame for assuming in this environment that I would not like being shot. If someone says they're afraid of sex, it's not your job to say they're not really asexual and their fear is a signal of pathology that must be treated. I think it's a pretty rational response to the way people treat disinterest, or relatedly, feelings about healthy sex after the only contact they've had has been violent or unpleasant. 
if you push them and continue to build up this cloud of violence around the need to accept sex, you make it so much worse than it could have ever been on its own. Someone who's afraid of sex isn't yours to mock and invalidate and boot from the club of sex favorable and sex indifferent asexual people. Being neutral toward or accepting toward sex are not the only acceptable ways for an asexual people to live an authentic life. I venture to say most people would have some gradation of fear toward having sex with those who aggressively desire them and toward whom they have no matching desire, but they get excused if there's a subset of the population they'll consent to sex with. Those of us who feel that way toward all sex are so frequently put in a category of broken that we often start to believe it, and that feeds into the fear too. It's not just an act. It's not always done out of love. It's not a neutral activity for everyone. It's not isolated from all its social, interpersonal, and cultural baggage, ever. And if someone says they're afraid of sex, it's not anyone's job to shake them by the shoulders and demand to know why, or set about fixing this fear, or make them admit that this is evidence of dysfunction as a fully alive person. If they want to talk about it, or change it, or risk sex with someone despite their fear, that's about them. It's not for anyone to decide that they should not have this fear or should not deal with this fear by avoiding the cause. I'm a lot more afraid of the hatred that rolls out of people who, when I say I don't want sex than I ever was of having it. So that is to say, uh, to sum up, I'm pretty neutral about the idea, but I think given all of the stuff that surrounds what people would expect of me if I were to consent to sex with them and just a lot of the expectation that, you know, then I would, I would have to react a certain way to whatever sex I was offered. I would have to, I would have to make the other piece, the other person feel like they did a good job. I would, you know, a lot would be riding on how I react to it. And you can't ever really divorce that from the entire experience. I think there are probably some people out there with whom, you know, I could at least have a pretty value-free experience with if I decided one day, hey, I want to try this thing. But to tell you the truth, most of those people, if not all of them that I know of in my life who would be able to give me that experience, They've never pressured me for it, and they've never judged me for choosing not to. So, um, like usual, it should always be about choice, it should always be about freedom, and if you're not willing to accept no, and you're not willing to accept never as an option, then you're not actually supporting of only consensual sex. If, you know, if, if the person's choices eventually have to lead to yes and lead to consenting to sex before you'll respect whatever their choices are, then, you know, this is not, this is not really about respecting their agency. And I've seen a lot of that in kind of sex positivity circles where People will say, yes, you should always have the choice, it should always be consensual, but you know, you have to eventually, or else we'll start picking on you and we'll start harassing you and we'll start trying to examine what's actually wrong with you that's stopping you and probably leading toward you must be afraid of it. Well, you know, if I wasn't before, all this heaping of expectations on how I'm supposed to feel about it certainly does create kind of a, a lot of anxiety about it, if not outright fear. So, I don't know, at this point in my life, I'm, I'm kind of glad that I'm so confident in every other aspect of my life that I can also extend it to this aspect of it and say, look, I'm a very secure person and I've proved that in every other aspect of my life that you're seeing me functioning as a person and being fulfilled and happy. So why don't you believe me here? Why do you have this obsession with feeling like there must be this hole or there must be this abuse somewhere? Um, I've never felt like there's any abuse at the core of anything that's happened to me personally, but you know, there's so many people who talk to me abusively about sex that I almost feel like that has become a collective trauma 
over all of the times that I've spent doing these videos, that I've done writings, that I've done with my review reviews and reaction to my books. Um, it's just like it's all kind of become this um, show of aggression and violence that has naturally become a part of my attitudes towards sex and it's not a healthy thing to have to incorporate all these people's attitudes in a public space toward how you personally feel about sex. Um, I don't know if these people think that they're helping by being aggressive or being really gross about it, but I guess they probably don't actually think they're helping. They're just putting on a big display or reacting how they personally feel. And um, it's not really about helping me. It's about outrage that I would dare to not enjoy something that they find fulfilling. And um, again, it goes back to some of the other videos and subjects that I've covered about how people have trouble seeing that other people could be fulfilled by things that they're not fulfilled by and vice versa, that if you're lacking something that's important to their life, they're convinced that something is missing in your life and they just, I guess, don't have the respect for diversity that you really need to acknowledge other people could have a vastly different experience in the world and still come to a similar happiness. So, anyway, I hope this didn't sound too convoluted or like I'm admitting to something that I hadn't before. It's just a more kind of nuanced understanding of how um, fear of sex could not, could be something other than like, oh, I'm actually afraid of having sex and that's why I don't have it, that it's all about fear. That's really not how I perceive sex. It's not something that I react to as an idea like, the main reason I don't do that is that I'm scared of it, but when it comes right down to it, there's so many suitcases of baggage around uh, how important it would be for me to like it that I kind of can't help but being squicked out by just that aspect of it. So, but I mean, I wouldn't have had to deal with any of that if I wasn't, you know, just disinterested in it in the first place. So, um, you know, that, I feel will always be kind of the root of why I don't desire uh, sex as a curiosity. I'm just very, very disinterested in the whole idea. And, you know, I just, most people are not really all that keen on intimacy with people they're not attracted to. So if I'm attracted to no one, it's like, it just becomes, I'm really not attracted to you. It's, it, you know, if you can think of, if you're not an asexual person and you can think of somebody that really is the opposite of sexually attractive to you and then you can take that concept and graft it onto maybe there's somebody out there like me who feels that way about literally everyone she's ever met, I, you know, Maybe there's always going to be uh, some fear and disgust there if that person is going to tell you I'm very attracted to you and I'm determined to make you mine. You know, there's so many of my interactions with other people that have been that kind of negative interaction. Um, like I said, happily most of the people that I keep in my life have been supportive since day one and you know, those who maybe haven't been just took some soul searching and some education to understand that this was part of who I am. So um, I'm grateful for the people in my life who have taken the time to do that and to understand that this is not something that they should be trying to fix or perceive as a trauma. Just, you know, I, I hope that the people in the asexual community that I know who do have some trauma attached to their orientation and some slightly more traditional fear are also able to access healing without people insisting that that be through um, having sexual relationships as a sign that they're healthy. <laughs> it's just those two things don't necessarily go together and healing is not 
becoming what somebody else says is normal. So, uh, yeah, that was a little bit of a weird ramble, wasn't it? Uh, I'm gonna close here, and hopefully next time I do a letter, maybe I can do something that's a little less confusing, a little less convoluted, and maybe a little more positive. I'll see y'all next time. Thanks for listening. Bye.